If there's one thing that spreads faster than a cold, it's misconceptions about health. You look terrible. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Myths, the series that finds the biggest myths that people actually believe and dispels them one by one. In today's installment, we're counting down the five myths about getting sick that gave us fever dreams. Is she, is she sick? Are you sick? No. Yeah, she's sick. That's why I'm wearing this and misting myself with hand sanitizer. Myth number five, if you have a fever, the contagious phase has passed. Stop pooping. The old adage goes that if you're showing symptoms, like a runny nose or fever, you aren't actually contagious anymore. This is actually false. Sure, you are often carrying a bug before any symptoms manifest, and for the average cold, you're also contagious during this time, spreading germs around before you've even realised you've caught something. But the contagious period does not stop there. No matter what your parents or significant other might tell you in an attempt to get you back to work or school. <laughs> Your highest level of contagion is usually in the first couple of days of visible illness, when your runny nose and constant coughing are working together to maximise the transmission of the germs responsible. People are at their most infectious on the very first day they show symptoms, and continue to infect others over the next five days. <laughs> Myth number four, the flu vaccine causes the flu. There's no shortage of controversy surrounding vaccination these days. So let's try to avoid World War 3 between vaxxers and anti-vaxxers and simply discuss how flu shots work. You're so concerned with stuff, like don't get them vaccinated, don't let them eat fish, there's mercury in the water. Jesus, how much Dateline NBC can you watch? You've probably heard flu shots explained like this. They inject you with a mini dose of the flu and then you get a mini flu, which is why you feel bad afterwards. And then you're immune. Well isn't that odd? It's like poking through meringue. Here's how it actually works. A flu shot does contain a specific flu strain, but the virus is totally inactive. The vaccine causes the body to develop the appropriate antibodies to fight off a variety of common flu strains. Jack, I need to ask you to drop your pants. Any side effects experienced after getting the flu shot is the immune system reacting to an introduction of a foreign substance to the body. Why can't we get um, medicine crisps? You know, because no one likes needles and everyone likes crisps. Myth number three. Starve a fever, feed a cold. Starvation is a great way to kill something. But when you starve a fever, you're also starving your whole body, robbing it of any crucial vitamins and nutrients. It's very important that you replenish my body with electrolytes after every involuntary loss of bodily fluids. Oh boy. Whether you have a fever or a cold, science says you need to drink a lot of fluids and eat well. End of story. So what should you be eating? While there's no cure for the common cold, chicken noodle soup holds the title of the most popular home remedy. Like most home remedies, its benefits have long been dismissed as comforting. But a study by Dr. Stephen Renard of the University of Nebraska has discovered that, in fact, chicken noodle soup does help alleviate cold symptoms more effectively than other meals, thanks to certain anti-inflammatory properties. Go grandma! I got you uh, some waffles here, courtesy of JJ's Diner, and chicken soup, courtesy of me. I'll take the waffles, thank you. Okay. Myth number two, you can kill a cold with vitamin C. Sweetie. Yeah, his color's not good. Do you want some orange juice? Many people champion vitamin C as the key to perfect health, but studies have repeatedly failed to find any conclusive evidence to support these claims. While one study did find that you have a slight chance of reducing the severity or duration of a cold if you hit your body with a heavy dose of vitamin C at the very first sign of illness, the effects are marginal. And to get the timing right, you need to be hyper aware of your body and the symptoms. Getting your recommended dose of vitamin C is good for overall health and maintaining the strong immune system, but ultimately there's no amount of it that can stop a cold dead in its tracks or significantly alter its trajectory. If little is good, a lot is good, it's gonna be just fine. Myth number one, cold weather gives you a cold. With all the compartments on your belt, you'd think there'd be one for tissues. Thanks. People tend to get sick in the winter, but the cold weather is not to blame. In fact, cold weather is actually preferable, considering the average cold germ dies in sub-zero weather and generally thrives in warm temperatures. Furthermore, according to some researchers, going outside could increase the number of cells that fight infection. Human behaviour is the real culprit, as we stay cooped up indoors in close quarters with other people in winter, increasing germ transmission. What about damp hair, wet clothing or sweat? Getting wet and catching a cold have always been linked in public opinion, but once again, no correlation. 
Being cold and wet is certainly unpleasant, but is ultimately unrelated to any illness short of hypothermia. Leslie, I, I typed your symptoms into the thing up here and it says you could have network connectivity problems. So how many of these myths did you believe? I do Not there. For more contagious top 10s and cold curing top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Oh, thank you, doctor. No, I'm not a doctor.